fall, Justin would be 25 today. So it's kind of a special day for me. Um, grew up in a home. I was a single parent most of my life. Um, his dad and I got divorced very young. Um, and I guess he seemed like a normal child until he hit high school. And that's when things kind of started to change. Um, I guess he got into the wrong crowd, so to speak. Um, dabbled with drugs um, on and off. And then when he got out of high school, um, I guess he got deeper into it, which I did not know at the time. He actually became a dealer, which I was obviously not happy about. Um, in order to try to get away from that lifestyle, he decided to go into the military. Halfway through boot camp, he fractured his kneecap and they sent him home for recovery. During that time, I guess he fell back into the drug scene. When he went back to um, the Army, he tested positive. So they kicked him out. After he was sent home, he decided that he was going to try different alternatives. He was going to try to uh, stay away from all the people that were a bad influence on him, and that just didn't work either. So he had one last effort, and that was to move to Arizona. And he moved to Arizona where I thought he was doing well, and it so happened that his friend in Arizona also was into drugs. And so it was a never-ending battle with the, with the drugs. Justin also um, was, was an informant for our local police station. And that caused a lot of um, disruption in his life, I think. He, I mean, his, his paycheck was busting people that sold drugs. And um, they eventually got him to work with a few of the other police stations locally. And in fact, the morning he passed away, he had made a couple calls to the undercover narcotics cops to see if they had any more jobs for him. The, the coroner thinks he passed away right around February 10th of 2008. I did not find him until the 16th. Um, he lived in a condo that I own. And so I, I walked in one morning, I was on my way to work, and I hadn't heard from him, which I thought was a little odd. So, and I tried several times and he hadn't shown up at his job either. So I uh, went into let myself into the condo, and as soon as I opened the door, I knew it. They found um, cocaine and heroin. He was, um, they said he was speedballing. When his tox report came back with heroin, it was very shocking. Um, one of his friends is addicted to heroin and he had just gotten out of rehab for heroin. And Justin used to always say to me, he's stupid, heroin is, is terrible. And he'd say, I know cocaine's bad too, but heroin's much worse. And, and obviously when you mix the two of them, it's fatal, or it can be. Uh, it was about two weeks before he passed, he came in for the weekend while I was out of town and stayed with his younger sibling. And they had a wonderful talk, you know, he told his younger brother, you know, stay away from drugs, you know, um, Somehow he knew he was going to die from drugs. He just, he told my son that. He said, you know, if the one thing that's going to kill me, it's going to be drugs. I really think that it, a lot of it had to do with the fact that he just got in the wrong crowd. It's been a long year. You know, I think of Justin, he's missed, he missed his brother's wedding. He missed his first niece being born. You know, and getting through the holidays has been very, very difficult, and now we're approaching the one-year anniversary. All the time I get people asking me, how do you do it? How do you get through your day? My response is, I don't have a choice. You know, you have to go on. I have a family. They need me. I need them. You, your, your world doesn't stop. And I know Justin wouldn't want me to stop.